Members of Congress ratchet up pressure on nursing homes. Louisiana House votes to allow cameras in nursing home rooms. Bacteria has nursing home facing down a $278 million fix. Help addressing opioid epidemic and long-term care is now on its way. In the Bronx, Stadium Sense brings the ball game to the residents and aides receive 40 hours of pay for 30 hours of work in a new plan to combat turnover. This and more next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning, and today is Friday, April 6th, 2018. Four influential Republican congressmen sent a letter to federal regulators on Tuesday requesting sweeping answers about the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services oversight of nursing homes. It's part of the House Energy and Commerce Committee's official inquiry into how well the agency oversees skilled nursing providers nationwide. At the epicenter of the inquiry is the Rehabilitation Center at Hollywood Hills, which infamously did not have sufficient power supplies after Hurricane Irma hit Florida in the fall, allegedly leading to the deaths of 14 residents. The lawmaker's letter also painstakingly asks CMS for any information on Jack Michael, who leads the company that owns Hollywood Hills and has had run-ins with regulators and law enforcement officials at several other healthcare facilities he owned or operated. The nine-page letter to the CMS Administrator Seema Verma also asked for inf any information as to what CMS has been doing regarding, quote, reports of sexual abuse and neglect in skilled nursing and nursing facilities around the nation. The lawmakers said they wanted CMS to brief them on the issues raised no later than April 16th, along with a bundle of further information no later than April 23rd. McKnight's Long-Term Care News reporting. Louisiana families would be able to install video camera systems in their loved ones' nursing home rooms and monitor them from afar if the Senate agrees to a bill that won unanimous House support. New Orleans Representative Helena Moreno says that her proposal would give people, quote, an extra set of eyes on family members. Nursing home owners oppose the measure in the committee but haven't been able to stop its advancement. Stonewall Representative Larry Bagley voted against the bill in the committee, but he changed his mind on Wednesday saying, quote, I made a mistake. The cameras would be voluntary, costs would have to be paid by the nursing home patient or family member, and any roommate would have to agree to the installation. A 95 to nothing vote sent the bill to the Senate. Tampa Bay Times reporting. We'll be right back after this break. When you have satisfied and content CNAs, the care is better and you're going to have less nursing assistant turnover. So many times I think they're just you know, in the trenches and nobody hears, nobody cares about them. And, and it's not true. You know, it's simply not true. And, and this organization helps, that, helps them gain that voice and helps them be heard. We're awesome. And I'm going to hold my head high and I'm going to ride this magic carpet and I'm going to change the world. That's what NACA did for me. For more information, visit us online at nacacna.org or call 417-623-6049. I suppose I shouldn't be complaining because I have several friends and relatives up in northern Iowa who have it a lot worse than I do down here in southern Missouri right now. The past can hurt. You can either run from it or you can learn from it. Watch Katie in the Morning with Katie Page, weekdays, 10 a.m. Central. A recurring Legionnaire's disease broke out in an Illinois nursing home for veterans has caused deaths, lawsuits, and political trouble for the governor, Bruce Rauner. And now, preliminary reports shows that fixing the problem at the Illinois Veterans Home at Quincy could stick the state with a hefty bill. Task forces convened by the Rauner administration released an initial estimated repair cost of $278 million, the Associated Press reported on Tuesday, a price tag that includes $6.8 million for the construction of a temporary facility that would house residents during the overhaul. Legionnaire's disease, a respiratory illness caused by bacteria that thrives in water, has claimed 13 lives at the facility since 2015. Families of 11 of those seniors have sued the state. In response, Illinois officials installed a new water filtration system at the cost of $6.4 million, and Rauner has even spent a week living in the home in January to prove its safety. But more causes have sprung up since the fixes, prompting officials to explore wider-ranging solutions. 
The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, last year singled out skilled nursing facilities as breeding grounds for the bacteria that causes Legionnaires. Pointing to the data that shows skilled nursing facilities stay where either definitely or possibly to blame for 553 cases in 2015. Skilled Nursing News reporting. Long-term care professionals looking to battle the nation's deadly opioid crisis may have an assist on the way, thanks to a slew of new measures announced by the federal government this week. The National Institutes for Health, for one, said on Wednesday that it was doubling funding with an aim to speed up its uh, seeking of solutions to address the crisis, which kills more than 100 Americans each day. The U.S. Surgeon General also issued an advisory on Thursday, the first from that office since 2005, urging family and friends to carry the overdose-reversing drug Noxalone. Opioids are a critical issue for skilled nursing as the aging population deals with the increasing incidence of chronic pain. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration projects the population of older adults who misuse opioids to double the federal lawmakers are also looking to limit the length of new opioid prescriptions for Medicare recipients. A Senate committee on Wednesday released a discussion draft of legislation aimed at responding to the opioid crisis with an April 11th hearing scheduled. The Opioid Crisis Response Act also includes a few items that are of interest in long-term care, providing grants for entities to establish opioid recovery centers, issuing grants to help with workforce shortages, examining the impact of laws that regulate the length and the quality of opioid prescriptions, and advancing educational information on the crisis to providers. McKnight's Long-Term Care News reporting. Many of the residents of the Hebrew home at Riverdale, a nonprofit nursing home in the Bronx, are Bronx born and raised and diehard Yankee fans, yet haven't been to Yankee Stadium in decades. Through a new exhibition that opened on March 19th, they were able to be virtually transported back to the days of DiMaggio and Barra via a unique sensory experience. The Hebrew home has installed six baseball-inspired scents in its Yankees dugout exhibit including beer, grass, popcorn, and hot dogs, thanks to a new partnership with International Flavors and Fragrances, IFF, and Scent Marketing. The idea behind these scents is that with the push of a button, nursing home residents can experience Yankee Stadium in a whole new way. The home will incorporate these smells therapeutically, engaging residents in programming and activities at the Yankee dugout that incorporates the sense of baseball. From poetry groups to art expression, the New York Times reporting. The Glebe Retirement Community in the Roanoke Valley of Southwest Virginia is going to start having aides work just 30 hours per week, but still pay them for 40 hours of work. The bold experiment was announced on March 23rd and will officially kick off on May 4th. The outpouring of interest has been robust from both job applicants and peers, Glebe Executive Director Ellen Diardeen told Jim Berklin of McKnight's. The first two days brought 25 applicants for the 13 extra positions the Glebe will fill. They'll join a workforce of 18 CNAs currently on the work roster. Fellow operators also have called to congratulate the unusual strategy. To start, only CNAs in the CCRC's skilled nursing unit will be eligible for the 30-40 incentive. Yardine pointed out, to qualify the 10 extra hours of pay each week, a CNA must report to every shift on time, not leave early, and not call off any shifts. Any variances, including being even one minute late on any given day, will forfeit the week's bonus. The Dean said the idea came from Lifespire President Jonathan Cook, who had inherited such a system when he was executive director at Marquette, a CCRC in Indianapolis from 2005 to 2010. It worked wonderfully back then and still does, Cook said. The idea originated in 1994 with a professor at Baylor University, according to Cook and colleagues. Cook figures within six months, everyone will know just how successful the program is, and leaders expect that it will cost the 32-bed skilled nursing center a uh, about $130,000 annually, mostly from increased staffing costs, but cost save, but the savings in recruiting, retention, and other staff costs will more than make up for it. He said the much larger Marquette spent about three times as much on the program when he was there, and it was worth it. McKnight's Long-Term Care News reporting. This has been your Long-Term Care News Update. Everyone have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next week.